Here we are in the Still Life Academy website with the CGI Whiskey group course chat. And we're going to pop into the group. And within that, Neil has asked a couple of questions for us. So here we go. So we're going to cover this one off this time. So he is saying that he is getting some weird jaggedy edges appearing within his liquid and glass. Can we have a look and see what is going on? So yes, indeed, Neil has very kindly provided us with his file to have a look at. So let's use the camera checking one. So we're just going to target that one to get a bit of a closer look in and see what's going on. So here we are, we have our outer and inner glass with its UV map on it. We've got the glass on there and we have the subdivision surface of the liquid right beneath it. So if we get a Corona interactive renderer, what do we get? Now, obviously, we're not getting the emboss coming out because Neil has created his own version of that. But essentially, the, the bump is always going to be the same and the liquid texture as well will be the same. So, yes, we are indeed getting the same jaggies that Neil kindly showed us with a screenshot on the website group forum. So let's just have a look inside this. So NG gets us our wireframe and we're actually going to come out of this A4 view just because I need to see a bit more width on it. So we're going to get a camera's perspective and if we hit O that brings our object up very nicely. Now also the back offset panels, the copper plinths, they're getting in the way a bit. So let's just traffic light to hide it from the viewport but not from the renderer, just we've got more of a clearer view of what's going on. So we've clicked on liquid and we go to the points mode. You can just see that where the curve of this liquid is going, it's coming in a bit too far as we're going around the neck. And this becomes even more apparent when you turn off the subdivision surface by clicking on and off Q. So what we wanted to happen was the liquid to run all the way down the outside parallel to the inner wall, but between the two walls, the outer and the inner glass walls. And what seems to be happening is it is dipping inwards as we're coming up to this top area. So all we really need to do is select a line of points and then expand them outwards, but not on the Y directions, so only on the X and the Z. Excuse my accent. Uh, some people say Z, I say Z. And it's only going to be on, say, one, two, three, maybe four of them. Looks as if when we hit the liquid line, we are back to where we need to be. So to do it in this view is going to be nigh impossible. So let's just pop over to our front view and to get our bottle up. So yes, so it comes all the way down, dips up underneath it, but we are looking like we are going inside of it. So we get our rectangle selection. We definitely make sure that we have only select visible elements turned off. Otherwise you are going to get into a world of trouble if you only select the visible elements at this point. So as we said, we only want to influence the X and the Z on this. So we're going to turn off Y and we hit T for scale. And what this is going to allow us to do is I'm using a Wacom pen and I'm literally going to the right and the left. So that is scaling on the X and the Z. And we can see that clearly if we get our top view up scaling. So the whole thing is coming in and out. So that's why it's absolutely paramount that you have selected all the points possible, otherwise you are going to get a lopsided shape happening. So is it best to have subdivision surface on or off in this case? I would say on, because
because then you have the full idea of what is going on with this. So we're scaling in and out, and you're saying, well, where on earth is that inner glass part? And that's a very good question. So let's just see if we can ascertain whereabouts that is going to be. Now we have some other parts here that were modelled from earlier. And let's just see if we can use that as our gauge. So we're going to select all the points on that one. And that is giving us an indication of where we need to follow. So we need to turn that one off. Come back to our liquid. And I'm pretty certain that that first line is good. Come to the second. Scale it out. And I'm toggling with the space bar. So I've done T to scale. And then space bar gets you back to your rectangle selection. T to scale. Come on out. So we're looking a lot better. So we come back to our camera checking view. And let's go back to a clay mode again. So NC and Corona interactive rendering. What do we now get? We get what looks to be pretty much spot on for where you need to be with it. Okay, hopefully that has helped you. And in some cases when we're doing the normal move, things do tend to perhaps get a little bit out of shape and not quite what we need them to be, but that's one thing to look out for them. If you see those jaggy edges, just go in and just check where your liquid mesh is and if it is crossing over the line. Thank you.